Just ahead on KRQE News 13 this morning, a cup of Starbucks with a surprise note. That first word just automatically brought the picture of both sisters in my head. That note, this man says a barista left on his coffee, has him calling out the company today. Why he says the message hit close to home coming up. Also, bad neighbors, what deputies say a trio of teens took from one of their neighbors that has them facing charges. Also, a disturbing discovery. Why deputies say they believe what they found behind the door of his South Valley home has happened more than once and the charges the homeowner is facing today. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to KRQE News 13 this morning. It's 6 o'clock. I'm Adam Atchison. Good morning, everyone. I'm Krista Gutierrez. Thanks for joining us on this Monday, April 11th. We'll get to today's stories in just a bit. But another big talker, of course, the weather and rain. Yeah, we sure talking about another round of it. Kristen Curry has a look at that this morning. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Yes, we are talking some spotty showers today, and it actually gets better as we get into tomorrow. So keep that umbrella close. And as far as this morning goes, give yourself some extra time. If you are within the Songa de Cristo Mountains or the Jemez Mountains, that's where we actually have the showers going as we speak. So we're going to be tracking these snow and rain showers up to the north and around Santa Fe, Taos, and Angel Fire. Here in the metro, we're a little too far to the south at this moment to get in on the rain, but I am going to include some spot showers in our forecast through the day today. 44 is what you're walking out the door to here in the Duke City. Wind's not an issue at this moment, but hourly forecast tops us out in the 60s today. We are going to lose the 70s for the next couple of days. A lot of cloud cover hanging around today, and when it comes to the allergy report, unfortunately, we're still looking at some uh, issues out there with cottonwood, elm, juniper, and mulberry, particularly out east. So a lot happening in today's forecast. I'll break down the rain and the snow chances for you coming up here in about 15 minutes. All right, thanks so much, Kristen. We start with new details this morning on a rollover crash involving an APD cruiser. The intersection at Chelwood Park in Lomas is back open at this time after a car T-boned a marked police unit, causing it to roll last night. Police say both drivers sustained only minor injuries. That's the good news here. They were both taken to the hospital and are expected to be okay. No word on if the driver is facing charges. An Albuquerque man is behind bars this morning, accused of torturing another person at his South Valley home. BCSO says deputies were called to this house near Goff and Auden all Saturday night after a woman called 911 saying she was being held against her will. And when they got there, BCSO says that her boyfriend, Marcel Bland, was acting oddly. When you see someone pacing, you see someone kind of come and rush and meet you at the door. Um, we often think, well, what don't you want us to see inside the house? Well, deputies did search the home and they say they found a bloodied victim passed out on the couch and tools of torture nearby, including a taser, claw hammer and scissors. Bland's girlfriend told BCSO it was, quote, routine for him to bring people to the home to be tortured. According to a criminal complaint, Bland told deputies the victim stole from him, but in court Sunday morning, he had little to say. They believe there could be more victims. Bland is charged with aggravated battery, kidnapping and false imprisonment. Three teens in big trouble this morning after deputies say they robbed two elderly women over the weekend. 19-year-old Corey Redding, 18-year-old Jacob Sandoval, and 18-year-old Dylan Smith are all in jail today in connection to the Fruitland robbery. Deputies say the teens broke into Redding's 81-year-old neighbor's house yesterday, then pointed a gun at one of them who is wheelchair-bound. While one of them stayed outside, deputies say the other two suspects demanded money and rummaged through that house. They made off with jewelry and cash, which deputies say they did find in Redding's house later on. The men are all facing charges today, ranging from armed robbery to tampering with evidence. The investigation into a pedestrian crash over the weekend continues this morning. This happened near Central in Wisconsin Friday. At last check, the victim was recovering in the hospital in critical condition. It's unknown what caused that crash or if anyone is facing charges today. An Albuquerque man could face a judge as early as today after police say he threatened his ex-girlfriend and her kids with a gun yesterday morning. This morning, Gabriel Duarte is facing serious charges, including kidnapping. APD says when officers arrived to the apartment near Central in Wantabo, a woman ran out with her children screaming for help. The woman told police Duarte had come over uninvited, then threatened them with that gun. We later determined that that firearm was a BB gun, but no one knew that. And even the girlfriend didn't know that at the time that the incident was happening. She was in full belief and fear that it was, a, it was an actual weapon. After a five and a half hour SWAT standoff, Duarte did come out of the home and surrendered.
One of New Mexico's top 15 most dangerous wanted fugitives is off the streets this morning. 41 year old Julian Jesus Garcia was arrested on Friday. Garcia has been a fugitive since last month and was wanted for a parole violation. Authorities say Garcia's original charges included arson and aggravated battery. Officers say they also found drugs on Garcia when they took him into custody. At least one person facing charges in connection to a shooting over the weekend. Police say Tristan Whitmire was throwing a party near Gibson and University early Saturday when he noticed someone letting strangers inside that home. Investigators say Whitmire saw a man letting the uninvited guests in. That man was kicked out and locked out of the house. He and others then tried breaking in and ended up smashing the window near the door. Police say Whitmire then got his gun. A viewer submitted cell phone video to News 13 that shows what happened next. Take a look. <laughs> Police say four people were hit at last check. One of them still listed in critical condition. With Myers facing aggravated battery charges this morning, a search of online court records did not turn up a past criminal history in New Mexico for him. 606 and starting today, the Sandia Peak Tram will remain closed until next Friday. According to the Sandia Peak Ski and Tramway Facebook page, it's for spring maintenance. Some of those scheduled maintenances are in preparation, they say, for the 50th anniversary of the tram, which is on May 7th. That closure again is from the 11th until April 22nd. Also developing now, state officials say they're working to fix hazardous lead levels in water systems across the state. Data from the EPA and the New Mexico Environment Department found that 20 small water systems across the state have exceeded the federal standard for lead. According to the report, it's been happening for the last five years. The systems include Christus St. Vincent Regional Medical Center, elementary schools in Santa Fe and Camado, and the state prison in Roswell. This morning, officials are maintaining, though, the water is safe. Also happening now, authorities in Louisiana, they're trying to determine what led a man to gun down a former NFL star over the weekend. Yeah, 34-year-old Will Smith was shot to death Saturday night following a road rage incident in New Orleans. Shooting suspect Cardell Hayes is facing a second degree murder charge this morning. Authorities say his Hummer rear ended Smith's Mercedes SUV Saturday night. That's when police say Hayes got out of the vehicle, then shot Smith to death. Smith's wife was also shot in the leg. She is expected to survive. Hayes is being held on a $1 million bond. Also happening now, a criminal investigation is underway this morning into a deadly fire at a temple in southern India yesterday. Police say they've detained five people for questioning and are seeking at least 10 more in connection with that incident. Authorities say a firework ignited a stockpile of other fireworks at the temple during celebrations for the Hindu New Year. More than 100 people died. More than 500 others were hurt. Police say the temple did not have permission for the fireworks display that led to that tragedy. Okay, listen to this story. A Starbucks customer in Florida calling out the coffee giant this morning after what he says was a really nasty note. The anonymous man has a photo of the words diabetes. Here I come written on his receipt after ordering a grande white mocha. Granted, the hefty beverage does contain nearly 500 calories and a whole lot of sugar. The customer says the mean-spirited note only reminded him of his two sisters, though, both who have type 1 diabetes. He actually wrote that in a response on a cup for the barista and added simply, not funny. The man says he doesn't need an apology. He just does not want this to happen to anyone else, and it shouldn't have happened in the first place. Yeah, I don't know that I'd be laughing if no, I got a message like that. Not funny at all. all right. Today on KRQE News 13 this morning, violation on videotape. I had a uh, full on adrenaline rage going. I was, I don't want to be a victim again, and I was mad. Burglars break into a family's home unaware someone is watching this morning. The advice from the homeowner. Also, is it a small victory for residents who don't want to see a trash transfer station in their neighborhood? What the city is doing now and why the fight is not over yet. Plus, a proposed price increase. How much more PM wants you to pay up? We'll tell you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to KRQ News 13 this morning. I'm Crystal Gutierrez. I'm Adam Atchison. Welcome along Monday, April 11th. Well, the day's top story is coming up in just a moment. First, though, we're watching another round of rain. Coming. We sure are. Kristen Curry is talking rain and snow. Exactly. Yeah, snow for the uh, higher terrain. The rest of us looking at some spot showers, but a gorgeous start to our day. Wanted to show you this look out from our roof. Kim, you can see the showers there out of the Sandia Mountains, a little bit of clearing over the city itself, but 
Man, that is cool to start the day. And you'll notice when we uh, take a look at that top of the radar, most of those heavier showers a little farther to the north of Albuquerque, in and around the Sangre de Cristo Mountains and stretching east into the plains near Wagon Mount and Roy. But we're going to continue to watch these showers develop on and off through the day today. Your hourly forecast keeps us in the 60s this afternoon with a mix of sun and clouds overhead. But again, the rain doesn't stop today. We're talking scattered showers and some mountain snow to the north. Looks even better as we get into Tuesday, but cooler temps to kick off the new work week as well. So I'll break down that new seven day forecast for you coming up here in about 15 minutes. Thanks so much, Kristen. New this morning, the first of several hearings will begin today for PNM's rate hike proposal. The electric company wants the state to say yes to many of you paying more. Yeah, PNM says the proposed increase will bring in more than $120 million in revenue by boosting the base rate up to 14%. News 13 Sarah Yingling is here with the details, Sarah. Adam, during these next couple of weeks of hearings, the Public Regulation Commission will hear testimony from organizations and witnesses. PNM says it needs to pay for big investments it's made in the last five years after dishing out more than $650 million for electric system improvements. Those opposed to the rate hike only had last Thursday to speak out, where very few were in attendance at the public comment session. PNM has more than 500,000 customers, and those we spoke to think it's unfair for the electric company to increase its base rate. But according to PNM reps, very few New Mexicans will see the 14% increase. Most will see an 8% increase thanks to recent energy savings. It's been nearly five years since a rate increase. A recent rate pr increase proposal of 12% was rejected by the PRC. Back to you. All right, Sarah, thank you again. The hearings before the PRC begin today and run through the 22nd. If the PRC does approve the increase, the rates will go up starting in July. On to news happening right now in northern New Mexico. Deputies are searching for a teenage stabbing suspect. San Juan County Sheriff's deputies say 18 year old Diego Mark got into a fight and at a prom party that happened after prom rather. Deputies say Mark pulled out a knife and threatened several students from Kirtland High School. Witnesses told deputies Mark stabbed one of the students when he tried to take that knife away from him. A warrant is issued for Mark's arrest this morning. Deputies say he may be driving a white Ford truck with New Mexico license plate MGY168. If you have any information, you're asked to call San Juan County Dispatch. New this morning, the city says it is withdrawing a zoning change for a garbage transfer station in the North Valley, but the fight is not over for residents yet. The city says it plans to still build it. The city wants to turn a 22 acre property at the corner of Edith and Griegos into a transfer station. Dump trucks would drop off loads of trash and then a tractor trailer would haul them to the landfill west of town. The plan has many neighbors concerned about increased traffic, pollution, odor and littering. According to the Albuquerque Journal, the city will still try to build the transfer center under the current zoning rules, which allow manufacturing. We'll let you know what happens right here on KRQE News 13. On to news happening today, all presidential candidates except for Ted Cruz are expected in New York to campaign ahead of the primary later this month. And meanwhile, a new Associated Press GFK poll out this morning shows more people favoring Hillary Clinton over Donald Trump in a general election matchup. Meanwhile, the possibility of a contested Republican convention is looming. Polls show Trump expanding his lead over rivals Crude and Cruz, I should say, and John Kasich in New York. After winning Wyoming's caucuses this weekend, Democrat Bernie Sanders says he's shifting his focus away from Clinton's qualifications and back to the issues. This morning, an Albuquerque man is warning others after finding a lost German Shepherd dog and trying to find its owner. Listen to this. Dan Brockett found the German Shepherd dog near Wyoming and Paseo about a month ago. He says as soon as he posted found flyers, a parade of people came in claiming that the pooch was theirs. Five people that claimed it was theirs and one person that said that he could get a hold of the owner if I gave him the dog. <laughs> Yeah, so eventually the real owner called, had papers to prove it. Animal Welfare says the situation is not unusual, believe it or not. That's why they say always check for a microchip if you find a dog. Of course, microchip your own animal. They say if not microchipped, a picture of the owner and the dog is always good. Two accused burglars are facing charges this morning, and a Massachusetts homeowner says a security investment that he made paid off in helping police nab them right in the act. The entire thing was caught on surveillance camera. The homeowner says these two broke a glass door, triggering the security cameras that he'd set up. After they made their way in, one of them tried to coax the family dog into another room, and the homeowner was watching this on his phone live the entire time.
and called police. They were able to get there while the men were still inside and make the arrest right here. The police, yep, there they go wow. up the stairs and they pulled them down. And all because he had that security system set up, that one little camera. Yeah, proof that technology works, right? Yeah. You know, maybe not the dog so much in that case. Bad burglars. <laughs>